Hello, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. Today, I'm going to do five albums to get you into shoegaze. Some of you guys requested this genre in the comments section of one of my videos, so thanks for that. This is for you guys and for anybody else, hopefully, who watches these videos. Shoegaze is one of those bizarre journalistic terms that was born out of a specific kind of 80s dream pop established in the UK in the late 1980s that journalists were struggling to define at the time. It was originally coined as a pejorative term due to the fact that the bands that were playing this kind of music would often stare at their feet live on stage, so literally shoegazing, and that was due to the fact that they had such an array of pedal boards for their guitars to create the soundscapes they were creating, but also the fact that there weren't many bombastic personality figures in this kind of music with these bands. You know, the music strayed away from that, it was more introspective, and these characters happened to just be people on stage playing in front of a crowd. It was about the music and the feeling, not about these kind of um, bombastic characters that you found in other genres of the music from the 80s. Shoegaze is a very sonically recognisable style of music. You have distortion and walls of noise created by guitars, feedbacks. You have lots of different guitar lines creating a swirling effect that engulfs the listener. You have very ethereal vocals that sit along the top of the music and often are quite hard to hear. You have all these pedals being used, you have flange, distortion, reverb, delay, all of these things to create this swirling, woozy, washing effect. Now there are tons of great bands post 2000 that would fall under the banner of shoegaze that I'm not going to talk about today because that's kind of the second wave of shoegaze or new gaze as that's kind of been termed now. So there's this whole new group of bands that have taken that mantle from these late 80s and early 90s shoegaze bands and they're fusing different genres and different ideas to create their own sounds. I'm not going to include those, I might do another video about those another time. Bands like Auto Lux, Pink Shiny, Ultra Blast, Have a Nice Life. There's so many brilliant bands doing the shoegazy thing at the moment but in different ways you have bands like um, Alcest and Death Heaven taking shoegaze and fusing it with black metal and post-rock as well. So there's, there's a whole load of sounds out there. Um, but this today, I'm just going to be talking about the original shoegaze period from the late 80s to the mid 90s. So without further ado, let's jump the fuck in. So number one, My Bloody Valentine, Loveless, released in 1991. One of the quintessential shoegaze records and one of the most revered records of all time. This thing consistently tops greatest of all time lists from so many different critics, and when you listen to this record, it's not hard to see why. MBV formed in Dublin in 1983, led by vocalist and guitarist Kevin Shields. Now the story goes that allegedly, when they signed to Creation Records after the release of their first album Isn't Anything, they actually took the label near bankruptcy from the creation of Loveless. So this album cost, I think, almost £250,000, and it was months and months of session time recording and producing it. The band really pushed forward with this style that we now refer to as shoegaze, with their ability to fuse the melodic with this distortion, this kind of crushing and insistent distortion, and these swirling vocal lines that kind of lift and float through the ethereal and unique soundscapes they were creating. For me, the success of this record is cohesion. For the 48 minutes that you're listening to it, you never forget who and what you're listening to, and the music wills you to pay attention throughout. I've listened to this record hundreds of times since I was kind of 13, 14 years old, and I always find something new in it that I haven't heard before. There's just so much to unpack. Even a track like Sometimes, a track with gently strumming acoustic guitar lines and stripped back percussion, comes with this accompanying, unrelenting wall of distortion, which always is constantly reminding you of the sonic aesthetic of the album. One of the brilliant, unique little flourishes you'll find in the album is Kevin Shields' glide guitar work, which is most prominent on the tracks When You Sleep and The Closer Soon. Uh, he would strum his guitar and use the tremolo arm to detune the strings, and as a result you kind of get this bandy, sliding, gliding effect from the chords. This album was recorded in a very meticulous way. It cost a quarter of a million pounds to make, it was months and months of studio, Studio time. Just to give you an example, one of the tambourine tracks on one of the pieces of music 
took an entire week for the band to decide what to do with it. So they tried different tambourines, different recording processes, different mics. It took a week just to lay down that one track because it would not, they would not finish in the studio until Shields was happy with what was laid down until it was absolutely perfect in his eyes. So even that took a whole week. Shields and the band's insistence to get everything right down to the T is kind of proven in the fact that they didn't even follow up Loveless until 2013 with their self-titled MBV. It took them that long to get to the point where they were happy with releasing a follow-up. And, and actually as a result, I mean, it's a fantastic follow-up album. And once you've listened to Loveless, definitely go and listen to the follow-up MBV because that is a brilliant record too. Number two, we have Slow Dive with Sue Vlackie released in 1993. It would probably make sense at this juncture to point out the fact that there is a widely considered holy trinity of shoegaze bands. First would be My Bloody Valentine, the second would be Slow Dive, and the third is Ride. And those bands are widely considered to have most clearly embodied the shoegaze sound and are still held up as totems of the genre now. Slow Dive are an English shoegaze band from Reading who took stylistic influences from bands like MBV and the Cocteau Twins to create their own brand of swoony, dreamy, spacey pop. Suvlaki is a record that kind of rushes into your ears from the first second and gently laps at your brain, willing you to kind of just accept the woozy sound and go along with it, go along with that flow that it has. Unlike Loveless, I feel like this is a good example of the reason the terms dream pop and shoegaze become quite synonymous. This, it kind of, it sounds like a pop album, but it's played 40,000 feet below sea level, and all the bubbles are kind of gently trying to escape to the surface. You kind of exist in this strange vacuum. That's how this album feels to me. Every track seems to have the ability to put the listener into a kind of trance, be it the song Where the Sun Hits, with these kind of lofty, poignant key parts along with uh, Neil Halstead and Rachel Goswell singing these kind of gloomy lyrics an octave apart, which is like sweetness, I watch you, burn away, it's something like that anyway. Or the opening track, Alison, which is this deceptively simple composition that slowly builds to this profound chorus. This, alongside Loveless, is a great example of the way Shoegaze is able to create parallel emotions within the music. With Suvlaki, you have a track like Suvlaki Space Station, which kind of straddles the line between lethargic and impassioned, whereas with Loveless, it feels like the tracks kind of do it completely different. They straddle the line between ferocity and a kind of lulling comfort. As a side note, listen out for the bass parts in this album. For me, they were really what ground the tracks and they stop all those languorous guitar sounds from floating away. It kind of anchors it all down and gives it a grounding and an emotional resonance. And I think that's so, so important for this record and so much part of the aesthetic and the feeling that this album creates. Number three, we have Ride with Nowhere, released in 1990. So this is one year prior to Loveless being released. So this is the final holy trinity of shoegaze bands that I spoke about. Ride, they released their debut album Nowhere in 1992, massive critical acclaim. It's pretty great actually listening to these three albums and holding them up as totems for the genre because they are so wildly different. They give you so many different things. Each album gives you something completely different. You have that, you know, you cut, it's unrecognisable, that swoony, dreamy pop feeling from Slow Dive's Suvlaki. The same, as, the same way Loveless has that buffeting wall of noise and distortion that you can only get from that album. And exactly the same can be said for Nowhere's propulsive energy. The band hail from Oxford, England and claim to have found a lot of their stylistic influence from bands like my Bloody Valentine, also the Stone Roses, and Sonic Youth as well. Nevertheless, these guys sound wholly unique in their sound. They've taken these tropes and these ideas and they do make them their own. And while the shoegaze tropes are there of dreamy vocals and swirling guitars, it's very much the spirit and energy that makes this album special. The whole record has this vigour that's just never really absent. Even after the one-two punch of Seagull and then Kaleidoscope, you have the more ballady track in a different place, which uses these kind of quiet tom drum rhythm, but even that's accented. It's just preparing you for this kind of propulsive chorus that's building up slowly. And that's the kind of energy that's bubbling under the surface all the time. It, it's always there and you're always aware of that energy. I think actually a lot of the album's intensity comes from the mixing of the percussion parts. They're a lot higher up in the mix than a lot of the shoegaze bands at the time were doing. If you listen to Loveless, the percussion tracks are often drowned out by the swirling guitars. And um, with this, 
with Rye, they decided to keep that a lot higher up in the mix. I think that definitely adds to the, the non-stop energy throughout. There's so many standout sections in this record. I mean, the pure pummeling force of the, of the contrasting section in Dreams Burn Down, you have these rhythmic guitars along with this kind of uh, high lead guitar part that just keeps ascending all the time. The pure dynamism alone in that track is just so brilliant. The album also contains the shoegaze classic Vapor Trail, which is one of the more introspective tracks on the album, but also one of the definitive pieces of music for the genre as a whole. So go out and listen to that now, an utterly classic record. Number four, we have Swerve Driver with Rays, released in 1991. Another debut record here, and another band hailing from Oxford, but again, another very different sounding shoegaze record. This is a band that are put under the mantle of shoegaze because of their sonic traits as opposed to their ethos. They carry a kind of swagger that other shoegaze bands of the, of the time didn't carry. They write songs about American cars. All these things kind of make them a little bit of an anomaly of the period. This is a band with a lot of heavy rock influence. You have much beefier guitar parts. You have vocals that aren't quite as ethereal. They're a little bit clearer than some of their shoegaze contemporaries. Nonetheless, I do feel like this is still a shoegaze record. You still have those stylistic generic tropes like the washy guitar effects and pedals, so delays and distortions and tremolos, all those kind of sounds. You also have a duality of emotion that I feel like you are getting with albums like Suvlaki and Loveless too. The track Son of Mustang Ford has these metallic rhythmic guitar lines and this kind of frenetic energy that kind of, it almost has like a post-punkish vibe to it. Rave Down is definitely one of the standout tracks of the record. It's this mid-tempo jam that, that breaks into this blistering, emotional middle eight section that then breaks back into that jam at the end. I just, I love that track. I found this is one of the most immediate listens when it comes to listening to shoegaze records, this clicked for me almost immediately. And I don't know if perhaps it makes it quite a good entry to the genre for people that are coming from heavier music, because it immediately you connect with it, but you're starting to get some of those stylistic tropes coming through from shoegaze that might make it easier for you to pursue other shoegaze albums after, after this. As a follow-up listen, you should definitely listen to Mezcal Head, which was their release straight after this. Another brilliant record, some considered to be even better than Ray's, Maybe it is, I personally connect more with Ray's itself, but nonetheless, go and check both out. Number five, Swirlies with, and they spent their wild youthful days in the glittering world of the salons, released in 1996. And now this is for something even more different, um, coming at the tail end of the shoegaze movement in 1996 and geographically completely removed from the rest of the English bands that I've spoken about so far. Swirlies are a band from Boston who were formed in 1990 at the height of the shoegaze movement in England. From what I've read about this band, they were at the time considered a kind of American alternative to My Bloody Valentine that kind of melded the US indie noise rock scene with the UK shoegaze sound that was coming out from bands like Cocteau Twins, My Bloody Valentine, etc, etc, etc. Apart from the obvious distortion and guitar noise comparisons, I don't really hold too much weight to this comparison of MBV and Swirlies. I think both bands carve out their own sonic identities completely of their own, and they, 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 they do sound very different when you listen to them, even side by side. This might actually be one of my favourite records of all time. This has ballsy experimentation this album and the tracks twist and turn they're very unpredictable you feel like you're holding on for dear life this is such a vital album this has a, such a vitality to it in fact in a similar way to how I feel with Rides Nowhere it has a vitality that's, that's, that's palpable all the time when you're listening to it. The proper opening track in Harmony Newfound Freedom starts with this typically shoegazy sounding soundscape guitar chords before jumping into this in unison stabbing from the guitar, the bass and the drums, a kind of dissonance. It creates a division of sound and they keep cutting from this sound to this sound. Um, and then slowly adding in different time signatures. And what that does is that keeps the listener kind of hanging on, not knowing what's gonna be coming next. That's part of that unpredictability that I was talking about before. The band uses these deep swirling pedal effects underneath this track and at one point cuts that out as we go to a clean guitar part. Just an example of the beautiful dynamism that they managed to pack into these songs. The end of the track has this beautiful lamenting yet heavy guitar part, which is repeated over and over and over and just creates this 
this lovely effect of kind of falling backwards into the sound and just letting it take you. The fourth track, Sounds of Sebring, uses chorus pedal guitars and floating vocals. It's a bit more introspective than some of the other tracks on the album, but unlike Slow Dive Suvlaki, it never properly holds back and just kind of floats. You still have the drums adding this rhythmic complexity with these 16th notes on the snare that kind of keeps that bubbling feeling and the vitality going a bit like Swerve Driver's Rays, actually. Despite this record being very different from something like Suvlaki, I feel like this band wears their heart on their sleeves very much the same as Slow Dive do. It just takes longer for the emotions to sink in due to the kind of complexive, complexive, complex, intricate songwriting. Complexive isn't a word. So that's my five albums to get you into shoegaze. I think there's gonna be a bit more of a debate on this one than usual because one, people's opinions on what shoegaze are seem to wildly differ. I'm sure I'll have some arguments with people about whether they think Swirlies or Swerve Driver is shoegaze. And two, people outside of the Holy Trinity, people have very differing ideas of what think what should be considered the go-to when you're trying to get into a genre like shoegaze. So please do let me know in the comments section below. I'm ready for a fight. So should I have taken out Swirlies and Swerve Driver and put in Lush and Chapter House? Do you think I should have put in Mescal Head instead of Rays? Where the fuck is Pale Saints? Where's Medicine? Where's Moose? If you're pissed off that your favorite shoegaze band isn't there, let us know in the comments below. As usual, please subscribe, please like the video if you enjoy the content. Let me know which genre videos you'd like me to do next. I've got a big list of pe things that people would like me to cover, so I'm just gonna keep adding to them and try and get them done as, as soon as I can, really. Um, thanks a lot, see you soon.